Hey guys, hi, welcome back once again. My name is Vaishali and today I'd like to talk about the luxuries of life. So just the other day I was having this conversation on an exploratory holiday trip where unknowingly we happened to explore on the topic of luxuries. Invariably first associating it with the wealth and the riches in life which is in excessive, plentiful and abundant, which obviously I'm talking of all of the tangibles that money can buy. And of course, it has its due place for not everybody can afford everything or even every morsel of their everyday meal. And yet, as the conversations flowed, got more insightful, I realized that for me personally, having these beautiful, insightful conversations is truly a luxury. For it's not with everyone that such vulnerable conversations take place, where true meaningful soulful connections are built. Now to me it also made me realize that vulnerability is indeed a luxury, where one can be themselves without having to play any kind of a pretense, without having to be pretentious, without having to be armored up. And when I say this, what essentially I mean is the thought, what would such and such a person or people think of me if I don't fit into the image that they have crafted of me or the image that I have crafted of myself to appear in front of them. And to me, when we are having these thoughts, when we are living our lives through somebody else's notion of ourselves, which on some level is of course not a one-way street, it invariably implies that we are not free that we probably have not even given ourselves the permission to be free from the perception and opinions of others, which gradually have even become ours. And if we go through the history of humankind, which has shown us time and time again, that even the royals with the best of luxuries and grandeur that money could buy and can buy, many a times could not afford and cannot afford the luxury to live life on their own terms, the luxury to even have a say on their lives. They probably have never been able to afford that kind of a luxury which is not defined by other people's perception of themselves, where they are free to make their own choices irrespective of how others perceive you. Which reminds me of a dialogue by the veteran actor Rajkumar. Jinke ghar shisho ke ho, wo dusro pe patthar nahi mara karte. Invariably telling us on some level that unless one lives a very open and a transparent life, living in the glass house or with a clear glass image, metaphorically speaking, it needs a whole lot of covering up and cover-ups. A bunch of pretense plays for the image that one has crafted, which after a while does and can get very exhausting, not just personally, but even interpersonally. So when they say, try not to judge a book by its cover, what they actually just might be telling us is that it just might be a cover up for everything that one wants to hide, for it is exactly where shame resides. To me personally, luxury is also about having true, open, honest, respectful friendships and relationships where pretense has barely any place, where one is called out not even for their own BS, but one also has the freedom to call out their own on their BS, which naturally is both personal and interpersonal. And when I say looking at our own BS and being able to call out the BS of others whom we care about does not mean that we become demeaning towards others or ourselves. It entails that we maintain the dignity of the relationship and of the two people in the relationship or more people in the relationship while being able to call out the BS that we are engaged in. And to me, it's the bare and the most essential, luxurious necessity, which again cannot go without the essence of trust and courage. And invariably, the courage to trust again cannot exist without some level of openness and vulnerability. Going a little further, in keeping with the luxury or the luxuries, I'm reminded of yet another quote by Dodie Smith. Contemplation seems to be the only kind of luxury that costs nothing. And though I agree to his thought on most parts, 
I'd definitely like to contemplate on it a little differently. If I had my take, I'd say, contemplation seems to be the only luxury that costs not a dime in the pocket, for it is the only luxury that an unhurried mind can get, can achieve and can enjoy and relish in. For contemplation only can exist when we live, when our mind exists in an unhurried space. And in a sense thereby, luxury is the feeling of feeling unrushed. And yet none of these can be interwoven without the luxury of freedom. The freedom to have and make choices without feeling overwhelmed by them. Without feeling overwhelmed by the choices that freedom gives us. The freedom to live and experience one's life on one's own term, which is both personal and interpersonal, which kind of entails that we need to understand, to reflect on what our terms are. Can we negotiate and renegotiate and communicate time and time again our negotiables and our non-negotiables without necessarily trying to manipulate both the personal and the interpersonal dynamics? Luxury is having peace within our minds, our hearts and in our bodies. Luxury at times is also having the privilege to resolve conflicts in more or less peaceful manners. Luxury can also be not experiencing inner turmoil most of the days of our lives. Luxury can also be having peaceful nights of sleep and waking up feeling refreshed, rebooted in the mornings. So then let's take a little time out to ask ourselves, what's our idea of luxury? What's your idea of luxury? What is your luxury that money can buy? And then again, what are the luxuries that money cannot buy, has never bought? Let's try and reflect and contemplate on that. And I will see you once again the next week. Till then, stay tuned in. And guys, if you do like the contextual content of these videos, Please do like, share and subscribe.